are at the new Green Frontier Cannabis Conference hosted by Small Cap Power and joining us now is Anthony Durkas, co-founder of FSD Pharma. Okay, talk to us about FSD's mission, the management's mission to become the largest indoor hydroponic facility in the world. How far along are you on that ambition? Correct. So uh, currently we have 25,000 square feet operating and licensed. We have 220,000 square feet under construction that we hope to have operating in Q1 2019. Uh, and then the phase one completion will be about 800,000 square feet. Uh, after that, our phase two, uh, you know, our plans are to go up to 3.8 million square feet in total. So having this craft plant, uh, do you think that ties in to your growth story given that other cannabis players also grew from food facilities? Absolutely. Uh, Canopy, which is the world's largest, and, and Afria, both started you know, with former food facilities in place. And, and uh, for, for whatever reason, it seems to make a lot of sense. Probably because uh, food plants were designed and built where they're the easiest to, you know, to, to retrofit into uh, a grow operation. Uh, as we stand and speak today, we are 30 days since cannabis was legalized in Canada. What do you make of the last few uh, weeks? People say it's not an act, it's a process of legalizing cannabis. Uh, have you seen a few hiccups, supply constraints? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think on October 17th, yeah, especially the markets were very uh, bullish, very uh, interested, everybody was excited. When October 17th came around, you know, everyone was unprepared and that was across the spectrum from the provinces to the supply chain to the distribution chain. Uh, and that's part of, you know, a monumental uh, task like legalization. But at least it's begun. I think now over the next six months we'll start to see uh, uh, everything uh, smooth out. Um, you know, we still have a active black market, you know, because uh, LPs in the provinces still can't produce high enough quality at a good enough price. But we'll start to see over the next six months that begin to change. And then I think, you know, it'll reinforce, you know, what will be, in our opinion, in 2019, you know, the fastest growing industry in Canada. Coming back to what's happening to share prices of cannabis companies, uh, in such an environment, why should investors hold on to FSD Pharma? That's a great question. So I can never give buy or sell advice, you know, because I'm a director and an insider. Uh, people can see what I do because my insider uh, ownership is is on SETI, so people can see what we do. Um, you know, uh, timing any stock, you know, in any industry, you know, to, to time perfectly at a top or a bottom uh, is really impossible. That's like winning the lottery. So, you know, sometimes the Warren Buffett model tends to hold true. And, and overall, we've seen that theory, that Warren Buffett theory, that, you know, you can buy and hold, or you buy or you sell on averages, so not everything at one given time, you know, tends to seem to be the best way to, uh, to play any stock in any stock market. I think from us, our perspective, you know, our, our action has just begun. You know, we're getting so heavily involved in, in, in the medicinal and the biotechnology space. And the, uh, the biotech side is so, it's so interesting. For us, this is like going back to, you know, when penicillin was invented, you know, when they were playing with molds. Now with cannabis, there's so many molecular compositions and, and, and components that could treat so many different diseases and, and, and hopefully, you know, not only treat but also cure, you know, is what we're on the verge on is this new frontier of medicine. And that's what we're focused on. And I think that is, you know, a hundred times more interesting than the rec recreational markets. And you also want to tackle the opioid crisis in North America and you've ha uh, recruited new talent for that? Well, yeah, so, so the opioid crisis in, uh, around the world is, is absolutely uh, terrible. Uh, cannabis will be an incredible um, pain relief. And, and more importantly, it's not only non-addictive, but it's also uh, it's less costly. Ultimately, so you know, we see there's going to be a very, very big market. We think it can positively impact the world. We think that opioid crisis might be sort of the positioning that the U.S. federal government may use ultimately to, you know, to legalize it. Um, and these are exciting times. I mean, just the pain market and globally is such an enormous market. And you know, that's just one of hundreds of, of different medicinal markets. So, uh, you know, we're we're excited and, and we intend to, you know, be front and center. Uh, you know, uh, focus focused and dedicated to, uh, to bringing uh, cannabis-based medicines to, to everyone around the world. Exciting times indeed. Anthony, wish you all the best. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.